Hello, and welcome to my solo RPG journal. Today we're continuing the story of Gabriel, the alchemist who has moved to the city of Flyer Ridge, as he wants to set up a shop. He needs to set up a license and has been unable to find the person he needs in order to do that so far. So while he's staying in the city, he needs to earn a little bit of money. He has gone to the Adventurers Guild and signed on, signed on with a party who needed someone to help them track their quarry through the woods. Their, um, their leader, uh, a noble woman, a young noble woman who was set out to find glory, um, a monk who dressed rather shabbily, um, and a rather boisterous um, mage who very much needed to be the centre of attention, took him on and they set out out the southwest gate of Flyer Ridge towards the forest to look for the, ca- um, the caravan that went missing the day before Gabriel arrived in Flyer Ridge. Along the road, before they even got to the forest, they encountered a band of bandits who they dispatched quite handily. However, they did manage to... They lost one of their own. The bandits managed to kill the monk. And so Dania, the noble lady, quite happily dispatched them all. Gabriel brought one back from the brink of death in order to be questioned, and he agreed to tell them everything that he knew. So, at the end of the combat, Orlan, the sorcerer, was damaged a little bit, so Gabriel will cast uh, Cure Light Wounds for lots of healing. I can't remember now, but it's probably 8 plus 5, so 14. That's not how that works, 13. Maximum of 5, 1d8. To a maximum of five, so per cut, yep. So that is 13 hit points, just as I said, uh, which is more than is seven. So he is completely healed, and Gabriel spends one more spell point. So I need to track party statistics. No one has lost any hit points because Orlan was the only one who lost hit points and he has recovered them. As well as Patrick, but Patrick's dead, so he's out. So, we left the party with them standing next to a bunch of bodies, one of which was there was Patrick, their compatriot, the monk, uh, with Dania, Dania um, standing over one of the um, bandits who Gabriel has brought back to life, standing there after thrusting a dagger into his stomach. So he's now bleeding out again, but has said that he will tell them everything. So we did resolve that he, they are, the group is actually part of the group that um, are responsible for the missing caravan and that there are more of them. And he knows everything essentially, or most of it. He knows what their plans are, or at least thinks he does. We could resolve later, when we actually get to them, that he's missing information or didn't know the truth. But he at least knows that they attacked the caravan on the road and where they took it and what they were hoping to gain out of it. The first thing we want to do is have a look at this... um, random outlaw bands table and and see what it tells us so 1d10 to work out the outlaw band's primary business involves uh harboring fugitives mm, okay that's interesting so what we learn the outlaw band's colors are Maroon. The outlaw band symbol is a rat. Lots of rats around. The outlaw band's leader is a well-known fugitive. Ooh. So we're going to have to work out who he is. 
the Outlaw Band members primarily are displaced peasants. The Outlaw Band's goals include, uh, let's have a look, revenge against the region's elite. Okay, ooh. Okay, that's interesting. There's a few things that are coming together in my head here. The Outlaw Band's headquarters is hidden in or near an old lighthouse. We don't... Mm. Okay, so what, what's in an, uh, an analogue to a lighthouse in a forest? Well, that, no. So a watchtower of some sort. An old watchtower. Oh, do you reckon they their headquarters actually in Kolk, um, in the Kolk ruins, you know, in the old watchtower? Okay, so we know a little bit about who they are, and, and he straight up just tells us everything. I mean, the colours and symbol are probably on his person, um but he'll tell us who the leader of the band is. Um, so let's work that one out. Uh, UNE, NPC creator, Oracle. Okay. And we're going to go with a disarray rep level of chaos, of randomness. A thoughtful professor. Comparable in strength to the party. Motivations. Conquer the public. Guard literature. And conquer gluttony. Well, that's interesting. Human, elf, or dwarf? Human. Male or female? Female. Her. Uh, human, female, name? Mm, different human, female, name. Ah. Keep the name or roll a new one. Keeping the name. Uh, we'll get a surname then. Danny Dermond. A thoughtful professor, comparable to the party. His motivations are conquer the public, guard literature, and conquer gluttony, and the Outlaw Band's primary business involves harboring fugitives. So, we're some kind of rebellion against the theocracy that rules this town, at least. So that's very interesting. They, they will be around for a while, but the question will be, how will they re relate for the moment to the missing caravan. The outlaw band is feared or respected by, so going back to this uh, table over and beyond the tables, the outlaw band is feared or respected by uh, women and children. The outlaw band is respected by women and children. Distinguishing feature for an individual. Mm. That's for later. Poachers. The poachers' favorite prey include robbers. Roll these. So robbers. The typical the robbers typical strike typically strike with ambush tactics. And they are notorious for drinking too much ale. To March Ale. Okay, that's very interesting. Now, the big question here is, what's happening with this caravan? So, why did they attack the caravan? Was this... It sounds like there was something on it specifically. Was it a passenger? It sounds like there was a passenger that they were after. If they're looking at harboring fugitives, so... The the caravan had someone on it that the theocracy wanted. The high priest 
wanted this person and they didn't want them to come. So there was a person of interest. So I don't think he knows why this person is interesting. Just, just who they are. So let's create... I'm rolling dice for this. So we'll go uh, human, elf, dwarf. Uh, and get an elf. I would, we'll just go whole, full elf. Um, male or female. Male. So male elf. Elf. Male name. They need a name. Uh, their symbol is a rat. We'll, we'll just leave their name. We're not... Dany is not particularly interested in their name. So that goes unsaid. So Dany are in interested um, in this guy um, or the group. She's interested to find out, you know, who they are and why. But at the end of the day, the people hired her that hired the Adventurers Guild weren't the government didn't have an interest in the outlaw band or the person on the caravan, but the goods. Because it wasn't just people that were transporting, but goods. So it's the merchants that were interested in buying, getting the um, goods off the cal caravan. Their material has gone missing. So he's going to tell us where they are. I'm actually... Gabriel's pretty certain that they can track, but she is going to just say, get up and take us to the thing. Now, she's going to get Gabriel to heal him again so that he can walk. So let me just, uh, all in spell points, 14, used 14, and we're at 13 of 20-something. 24. So I can cast 10 more first level spells, or 11 more first level spells. Oh, no. Spell points plus bonus spell points. We've got heaps. Heaps left. So, we're not going to start walking. We're going to wait for the guard. So the guard will show up eventually, because they will have seen this fight break out, and they're going to want to take statements. So they're going to pull Gabriel aside. We'll just quickly roll for the others. Okay, so Orlan gets on the guard's nerve, but they're very, they're very quick to see. Um, Dania is just not having anything, and is a lot stronger than them and this is just putting her out and i think that they recognize that they're from a group of bandits that have been that are, the attackers are from a group of bandits um an apparently well known one as well gabriel however cuz they've not seen gabriel before the others are probably known around town as well uh, Gabriel, Gabriel, I think that they all believe him as well, seeing that he's with them. He, they have, he has helped um, Dania out, and so she's willing to back him. And so when and when they ask, start asking him questions, they can see what her reaction to all of it is, and that she he is with them. So. They're not hugely perturbed uh, by this the presence of this new person who they've never seen before. So what the guard are offer to do is to send their the bounty uh, for these. Is there a bounty? Oracles ask a question. Is there a bounty? For these 
members. And I think it's likely. Likely, yes. Cool. So there are, there is a, a bounty, and the guard say that they will pay the gold. Um, they'll take the bodies and uh, take the take the bodies and deal with them back to the thing. And they ask whether or not they want to revive. Um, they want to claim the body of Patrick. So does. Does Dania want to claim the body of Patrick? I want to say 50-50. No, she doesn't. She isn't willing to front the gold, whether or not she can or not. That's another question to get him revived. I think that revival... Revival is actually a rare thing, even when you get you pay the money to get someone to um, cast a revival... It often doesn't work. So she's very reticent to do that. She doesn't need his body otherwise. She doesn't know him. She's basically only joined up with him recently. Um, maybe that's a couple of years, maybe not. But they were comrades in our arms. And if she can't bring him back to life, uh, that's where the end of their relationship... Uh, that's the end of their relationship, basically. So... She doesn't claim the body or any of his effects, which uh, he didn't really have very many of or anything that really um, kept out. And Orlin, Orlin doesn't even look at him. He sort of sneers at him um, now that he's... Traveling companions being beaten. Uh, not sure what the relationship between them until now was, but looking at his character, he's not a particularly nice person and is looking down on him for being beaten by these easy bandits. Um, how could you do that? However, uh, so they're going to let us go and there should be money awaiting us when we get back to the Adventurers Guild. Uh, with a commission taken from the guards. So this will be a cheaper way of um, having to deal with that. And we're going to take our one bandit alive. Now, the question is, does he cause a problem? Now, oh, I rolled intimidation last time. For I think that he's going to... I think that we're going to get an intimidation roll from... I think even from Gabriel, I think they're all very against this. So Gabriel's actually going to be the one that um, tells him to keep quiet. And the other two are going to, you know, they're already intimidating with their presence. So Dania is of help. Orlin is of help. which is good because I rolled a two. But that's actually going to be more than a... Oh, hang on. Is intimidation a, a skill that... I don't think I don't think the, the guy is intimidated. I think he sees the guards and he's going... Now, they don't... They do believe us. They know that he's a bandit. So the question is... Do they let us take him with... No, he, they're not going to let us take him. They're not going to let us take the prisoner. And so Dany is going to be very annoyed that the guards step in and say, we're taking the prisoner. Um, he will be interrogated by the guard. And we can't let you have him. Even where and Dany is going, we need him. We need him to take us to the caravan. We will take it from here. That's none of your business anymore. So they're going to walk off, take the guy in, and um, yeah, sure, they're going to let us wander off into the forest by ourselves. So 
we've got two options. So Gabriel will go to Dania and say, we've got two options. The first is that we can track the bandits back to where they came from. Or we can go looking for where they ambushed the caravan and track it from there. Given our goal is to find the caravan, that might be a good way to find it. However, if there are more of them in the forest that could cause a problem for us, tracking the bandits back is going to be, might be the better idea, as they would be expecting people to follow the trail from the caravan, not from not to follow the trail from their friends. And I think Danny is going to be happy with this explanation. I'm not going to roll for that um, and just go, yes, do it. Okay, so I can track people with a survival check. You move at half your normal speed. So firm ground, DC is 15. There's no size modifier. No time modifier. Visibility is fine. And I think I, I'm going to take 20. I'm not even going to roll. We're just going to take 20 because we can take our time. What's more important is staying hidden and moving silently through the forest. So, yeah, I'm not even going to roll. We're just going to follow that back. Um, one of the issues with D&D is that... Uh, one of the issues from my perspective with D&D, a lot of people uh, dislike crit fails um, and crit, and like they, everyone loves crit success success but um a lot of people dislike crit fails because you know uh, something bad happens and for me that something bad often makes it more interesting it's much more interesting if someone does something unexpected happens a problem occurs and we've got to overcome it and this is the kind of role that having the ability to fail on would actually be really cool because we might coming across something unexpected. However, we're going to succeed. We can't not succeed. Um, even if I roll... If I roll... Yeah, we could fail and just get lost, but it, we're not talking about something interesting happening. We're talking about um, you're lost, you've lost time, it's going to be harder to find, in the, and you'll probably just get attacked by bandits resolving the issue. So, what's more important here is are we able to sneak up on them as a group? And I have a feeling that this isn't going to go well uh, with our fighter in her full plate armor. So, we're going to roll some checks. So, for Orlin, uh, that's a 15 for Orlin. For Gabriel, that's a 13, so that's not going to be that great. However, I need to look up what the armor check penalty is. Equipment, armor, full plate, minus six. Haha, <laughs> uh, that, that's pretty good. It's 12. Yeah, roll high on that. So we're all slightly above average. 12 being the lowest roll. Now, if we, when we come across bandits, we know what, to, what they need to roll against to find us. So the question is, are there more bandits? I think there are. We already rolled, are there more bandits? And we were looking for what they were doing with their current cap capacity. So the question is, is there a separate uh, stash of bandits in the forest or are they just at the caravan? Do the tracks lead us to the caravan or do the tracks lead us to uh, a banded encampment? So we'll ask an oracle. Do the tracks lead us to a bandit encampment? 50-50. 
This one? Yes, they do. Okay. So, the bandits have an encampment. Uh, we're led to a bandit encampment. And we're just going to call it there, as I expect that we're just going to end up in combat. So, tune into the next video in which we fight some bandits. Have a good one.